Hello, good people of La Jolla. I'm crime fiction author August Norman, and I am thrilled to be featured here by the one and only Warwick's Books. In happier times, we'd all be gathered together in the store to celebrate the September 8th release of my Caitlin Bergman novel, Sins of the Mother. Sins of the Mother tells the story of Caitlin Bergman, an LA-based investigative journalist whose search for her birth mother takes her from the streets of Hollywood to the mountain forests of Oregon, where a white supremacist group battles a doomsday cult, the same cult that Caitlin's mother joined, and the whole thing could end the world in fire. Perfect for fans of Tess Gerritsen, Julia Keller, and Michael Carita, Sins of the Mother was my chance to look at the families we choose versus the families we're born into, which is something that's been on my mind a lot lately since my wife and I just welcomed our first child into this ridiculous world. Plus, I get to make up a religion absolutely no one should follow. Okay, so I know what you're thinking. Why has such an obvious man created a character named Caitlin Bergman, a single investigative journalist in her 40s who grew up the adopted daughter of a mostly single LAPD officer? Well, it didn't start off that way. I, I created Caitlin as a supporting character in a manuscript I was writing about a, a hard-boiled ex-cop who needed moral redemption. And Caitlin was this moral compass. She was smarter than anyone I knew. And, and, and everyone right away who read that book said, well, Caitlin should be the hero. So here she is now later. Um, Caitlin Bergman is, is flawed, but she's smarter than anyone I know. She doesn't let a lot of people close, but when she fights for a friend or a story, she fights all the way to the end. Now, about being a male author and trying to capture the female experience. First off, let me say, I don't try to capture the female experience. I, 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 writing from a, a female character's point of view is something I take very seriously. Um, I believe it's an author's responsibility to start with respect uh, and empathy, and then from there, do a lot of research. So for my first novel, uh, Come and Get Me, which touched upon uh, sexual assault on college campuses, I went to 20 female beta readers before my publisher ever saw a draft. And those was two women in their 70s, 60s, 50s, 40s, 30s, and 20s, people of color, people of uh, various sexual preferences, uh, because I didn't want to step on uh, any toes or, or dishonor any experience in any way. Now, a group like that has a lot of different opinions, but ultimately the character that Caitlin has become is the combination of four of, of the best, uh, smartest women I know and love, and I hope you love her too. Here's a sample chapter from Sins of the Mother. Chapter 6 Caitlin had spent 43 years wondering if she'd recognize her own features in her birth mother's face. Would they share the same brown eyes, detached earlobes, or narrow lips? Had Mama Maya been responsible for her inability to roll her tongue or sit cross-legged? She ventured another look at the remains on the medical examiner's table, exposed only from the neck up, but saw nothing familiar. Jagged white chunks jutted from the distorted remnants of a mouth at unnatural angles. What happened to her teeth, Caitlin said, her voice raised to compete with the whir of high-speed exhaust fans. The room smelled clinical, but hints of decomposition sneaked past the Vicks vapor rub she dabbed into each nostril. Half are gone, and the rest... Uh, did something... Probably knocked out with a rock, Sheriff Martin answered. The stocky 50-year-old with the barrel chest carried himself like a bulldog, but his full gray goatee gave her the impression of a standoffish bear, wise and wary from surviving more than a few scrapes. Caitlin looked past the sheriff and the corpse to the medical examiner, a box-dyed blonde near her own age who hadn't said a word since they'd entered the room. Shouldn't there be bruising around the lips and nose then? The woman's latex gloves brushed against her scrubs with the forceful crossing of her arms. She one of them, Boz? You know how I feel. Caitlin had only met the pair 15 minutes ago, but could tell they had history. One of what? A reporter? I cannot tell a lie. I am indeed an agent of the press. The woman ignored her. I won't help one of those dogs. Martin held up a hand. Leslie, if you can't maintain a professional, maintain this. The examiner left the room, the door swishing softly behind her loud exit. Martin turned back to Caitlin. Sorry about that. People around here aren't exactly comfortable with your mother's religious group. Caitlin laughed. Well, you don't have Jews in Oregon? The sheriff blinked twice, started to say something, then stopped. Caitlin wasn't sure if his awkward reaction meant confusion or embarrassment. He jumped back in before she could decide. I understand it may be difficult, but do you recognize this person as your mother, Miss Bergman? Caitlin took another glance. The dead woman's hair, 
gray and beyond shoulder length, looked naturally straight like her own. But what did hair matter? Sorry, can't say. He took the answer like he'd seen it coming. How about tattoos or distinguishing marks? She should have a pink clover-shaped birthmark on the back of her arm. A long sigh escaped the sheriff's lips. Excuse me for a moment. He walked out the same door the medical examiner had taken. Alone, Caitlin reached into her bag and pulled out The Bitch Book, a crumbling paperback whose real title, She Taught Me to Fly, she'd abandoned in her teens. Year after year, she'd transformed the once sappy coming-of-age tale into a journal of every word she'd ever wanted to scream or punch at her mother, leaving a pulpy mess of multicolored pen strokes and torn pages behind. Peeling a rubber band off the well-worn cover, she ignored the slight tremble in her fingers and flipped to the page she dog-eared on her 13th birthday. She didn't need to read the words scribbled in blue pen between the lines of the publisher's original text. The angry cursive scrawl still came to her in dreams, but the moment required a formal presentation. Or always had in her mind. Now she wasn't even sure that the dead woman was Maya Aronson. She contemplated a peek under the beige drop cloth. Instead, her eyes drifted down to the only other exposed bit of skin, the feet. The days of toe tags gone, someone had wrapped a plastic label similar to a luggage tag around the woman's ankle. UD-0004. Caitlin deciphered the code easily enough, the year's fourth unidentified decedent. The door swung open, and the medical examiner burst back into the room, followed by the sheriff. Not that it matters, she said, holding up her gloved hands, but which side is the hemangiona on? Caitlin tucked the bitch book back into her satchel. Hemangiona? The M.E. slipped her hands under the drop cloth. Birthmark. The right, Caitlin said. Why wouldn't it matter? Rather than answering, the M.E. shifted the body, exposing the bare backside. Ah, you could have warned the woman, Leslie. Martin stepped in front of Caitlin's view. This body was found in the woods, only a few days ago, but animals, insects, and weather. I get it, Caitlin said, brushing him aside with confidence, then immediately wishing she hadn't. Patches of skin were missing from both of the dead woman's upper arms and lower back, and not from surgical precision. Any remnant of the clover-like blotch of skin Caitlin had expected to see had been scraped to the bone. A quick rush of bile fluttered her mouth. She swallowed hard and looked down toward the woman's waist, stopping at the hands. Neither had fingertips past the knuckles. She stepped back, turned away, and took two quick breaths. Wow, I get it now. Get what, Martin said. Is this your mother, Miss Bergman? Caitlin faced the man with a smile on her face. I have no idea. I also have no idea why you called me. You obviously don't know this woman's name. So why did I fly from Los Angeles to Oregon to to look at this dead body? If you've made it this far, that means you're interested in cults, Caitlin Bergman, supporting a great bookstore like Warwick's, or even helping to put food in the mouth of this hungry baby. Luckily, Warwick's has three ways that you can buy your copy of Sins of the Mother. You can go straight to warwicks.com and order it online, get shipping for as low as $2.50. If you're going to be out and about around town, you can actually call the store and arrange curbside pickup. That's 858-454-0347. And finally, if you're in the area and you're the mature, responsible shopper we know you are, they'll actually let you shop in the store, provided you follow social distancing guidelines. Three options. It's up to you. Plenty of choices. So order your copy of Sins of the Mother now from Warwick's Books. And stay safe until we can all get together again. Now, if you're not going anywhere right now and you're still curious about this religion I started, well, here's a chapter from Sins of the Mother where we meet Desmond Pratton, the wannabe guru who started the cult, the Daughters of God. Chapter 11. Guided by the spirit, I have communed with Lily Kramer. Standing over the chair of knowledge, Desmond Pratton rested his hands on the girl's shoulders and smiled at the women, seated cross-legged on the white marble tile, the Daughters of God. After a complete yielding, she accepted the knowledge and moves forward willingly, casting away her birth name, as must be done. Dressed in their ceremonial red tunics, the fifty women present for the ceremony raised their hands above their shoulders and spoke in unison, We say goodbye to Lily Kramer. 
At 19, Lily was the youngest of the daughters by far, and the only new recruit since the ascension of the five. She glanced back at Desmond, nervous, but full of joy. He nodded in encouragement. She straightened her white gown, cleared her throat, and spoke. My sisters, my mothers, my family. The confident woman's voice filled the gallery of light, absent the terrible stutter from which she'd once suffered. I came to you broken and lost, she continued, unable to stand on my own. You welcomed and soothed me, anointed me with your love and the light. The daughters raised their hands once more. You are unique, powerful, and necessary. Indeed, Desmond said, taking focus on the dais, she is unique, powerful, and necessary, and her name shall be called on the last day. He reached out his hand. Stand now and speak the name to which you will answer when the Spirit calls. Backlit by the golden glow of sunshine streaming through the gallery's twenty-foot wall of glass, Lily took Desmond's hand. Despite her year of labor around the compound as an initiate, he felt the unspoiled softness of the four-decade difference between their skin, something to look forward to later. I say goodbye to Lily Kramer, she said. From now until the last day, my name is Eve. Eve, the daughters repeated, rising to embrace her. Eve broke out in laughter, which led to tears of joy. Desmond let go of her hand, and she walked into the sea of women to be loved. It was good to see the daughters happy. Not just happy, but hopeful, especially after the last two weeks. He wished he could share their optimism. But his thoughts kept coming back to Daya. Until she returned, he wouldn't be able to relax fully. The double doors at the end of the gallery opened, and Gwendolyn Sunrise entered, dressed in her outer world suit. Have I missed it, she said, rushing to hug the newly named Eve. Eve threw her arms around Gwendolyn's sizable frame. Thank you, Sunrise. You're just in time for the climb. Desmond moved into the center. That's right, my loves. Eve must prepare. Who will help this daughter make the climb? All of the women, including Gwendolyn Sunrise, answered the refrain. We climb God's hill together now and at the end of days. Desmond kissed Eve's forehead, then raised his open hand toward the double doors. I pray for your ascension. Beaming, the young woman untied her dress and let the gown drop to the floor, leaving her in only white slippers. She bowed once, then walked out the doors, the throng of daughters following to escort her on the climb. Gwendolyn lingered. The suite has been ready, uh, including the, rather than letting her finish the sentence, Desmond kissed her forehead as well. Thank you, my love. Gwendolyn lived in a circle of trust, but he still didn't like hearing the words erectile dysfunction medicine out loud. Uh, There's something else, Desmond. A woman visited Daya's gifts. Desmond smiled again, finally infected by the day's hope. Another voyager? Doubtful. Gwendolyn handed him a photo printed from a security camera feed. I wasn't able to get her name, but she looks familiar, particularly the eyes. Good Lord, his smile disappeared. Why is she here? Oh, the sheriff brought her in to identify a body. Her name is Caitlin Bergman, Desmond said, the joy of the ceremony gone in an instant. She's Magda's daughter.